about you guys, but I like to win. I like to be all of my friends in Wordle, especially my coworker Rachel, who always seems to get like it on one less guess than me. Anyways, this whole video was her idea, so thank you, Rachel. But it's going to backfire on you because today we are going to be using Power BI to come up with the most optimal words to use as your first word in Wordle. It is the ultimate Wordle strategy. This is a beginner's tutorial, so just follow along with me. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments, and if you like this style of video, make sure that you already have Power BI Desktop installed on your device, as well as internet connection and a Kaggle account, which is super easy if you just use your Google, Gmail, or Facebook. That's where you're going to be downloading our datasets from. All right, party people, we're gonna head to Kaggle.com and then to the Kaggle dataset search bar. Type in Wordle. We're gonna be downloading two different data sets. The first one is Wordle five letter words, which is basically a list of all five letter words split up by their letters. I don't think it's a full list of all five letter words in the English dictionary, but it suffices. Next, we'll download Wordle answers list, which is a list of all past Wordle words. Make sure to extract or unzip the zip files so we can import them into Power BI. Now I'm just sizing up my data to see what I'm dealing with here. Let's now open Power BI Desktop. That's me, goodbye. So we have our untitled report. We're going to file save as Wordle strategy and it will save as a PBIX file wherever you decide to save it. Next click transform data and that's going to open up a little window called the M query where we can perform all our light ETL. I say light because the crazier the data transformations get in Power BI M query, the longer the refresh times are gonna be. So we just wanna keep it light, clean, and classy. I can't believe I just said that. Um, but now you will never forget. Let's ingest our new data source. So that's gonna be a text or CSV file. All of these options here are called Power BI connectors. They are the magic that connects your data from your data source to Power BI. Let's get the five letters CSV first. Click okay. And I'm going to rename the table to letters. I'm also going to click use first rows headers because it's clear in our Excel, the headers are supposed to be the one, two, three, four, five numbers. This happens a lot when importing data from like Excel sheets or SharePoint. So just keep a look out. And look, you can see in doing that, we added a step in our applied steps. This thing over here is like querying for dummies because it literally lists the query steps in order in plain English. I'm gonna select all the columns by clicking one and then holding shift and clicking the last one. Right click, transform, trim. This is going to remove any white space if there is any from the beginning or the end of the text values. We wanna do this because now we're going to create a new column that concatenates all our other columns to create an actual word. We can do this in a multitude of ways. We can create a custom column and write custom M code, but this is a beginner's class, so don't worry, I won't make you do that. Column from examples is cool, let's click on from all columns because we're going to be using all of them to derive our new column. So we're going to fill in the blank in one or more of the row spots with the value we want. Then Power BI is going to intelligently fill in the rest for us. Science at its best. There's actually a mistake in here, but we'll come back to it. Okay, so I imported our other table exactly how I imported the first. I'm renaming it and renaming the column. Close and apply everything we just did. Head to our model view, that's the family tree icon, and we're going to create a relationship between the word columns in both of the tables. Power BI defaulted this relationship as a single direction, one to many. If you double click on the line, it pulls up the details and you can change the columns you're using to create the relationships. You can see the cardinality and the cross filter direction options. For beginners, I would say stick to this type that Power BI defaulted to and do some research on the others before you try to implement them in your model. Wait, let's go back to the M query and rename these columns. I don't like the one, two, three, four, five thing. Fun fact, if we wanted to remove columns we aren't using from the model, we totally could. We're not going to be using fourth and fifth, so you guys can get rid of them using the choose columns method I'm showing you right now. You can also use the X down there to remove any steps in your query if you made a mistake or you don't need the step anymore. 
close and apply. Okay, let's start building. I clicked on the insert tab at the top next to home shapes, that first rectangle, and I'm just gonna play around with this. Green for money, let's go. We'll call it Wordle Strategy. We need to make sure that we're always titling our reports and making it super obvious what the report is about. Before we start creating measures, I'm going to show you guys the best trick ever, but I did not come up with it, so don't give me credit. Go back to the M query and click Enter Data. We're going to create an empty table. You can just call both the column and the table measures slash expressions. Okay, close and apply. It's here. Now, inside that table, under table tools, let's create a measure. Make sure the home table is the empty table we just created. Call it first letter count equals count letters first. This is just going to count the number of rows in the table that contain a value. In this case, it's just a single letter for the first column. You can see the measures in there. Click on the three dots and hide. Wow, so organized and pretty. Okay, let's open our letters table in the fields pane. Click on first and it's going to plop a table visual on our canvas. We're gonna add our new measure there too. You can see them under where it says values. Now I wanna switch this visual to a clustered bar chart so we can really see the distribution of values. I'm gonna change the cosmetics of it. I say use the same font family across the report, especially if it's like a one page report. Tree map, yes. This is our tooltip. You can see it's showing the count of each letter. It looks like according to this data, most five letter words start with C. I'm going to control copy and control paste my measure formula and create one for the second letter and I'll do the same with the visual, just control copy, control paste. I want to remove some noise in the data, aka we need to find a way to filter out the words that have already been used because they're probably not going to be used again. So let's go to the data view, add column, and create a flag column in our letters table. So just for learning purposes, I'm going to be using the DAX function related, which basically calls upon the matching value or values in a related table to be returned. See, dodge and dodge. Okay, let's add the flag if the related value is not blank, meaning if there is a value in the related table previously used words, return one, else return zero. I 
I'm just gonna check what it looks like and something looks really wrong. Remember when I said we made a mistake earlier in the view? Yep. Let's go back to the M query. I think it was the Power BI intelligence component of the column from examples that's failing us. I'm just redoing the step and yeah, this is wrong. Like it's not correctly creating the word. Don't hate me. There is an even simpler way to do this. We're just going to select our one, two, three, four columns again and notice I'm further up in the query steps. Like I've been jumping around by just clicking on them. I'm going to click merge columns. It's going to ask me if I want to insert the step in the middle of the query. Sure. I'm gonna delete the step of us creating the clearly wrong column we made before, reading my new column and close and apply. I think we should be good now. That looks so much better. Okay, let's edit our measure. Click on it and add in a calculate function. You'll use calculate more than you'll use any other DAX function. In this case, we're going to use it to filter out our previously used words. We'll keep our count aggregate as the first parameter in the function and then add a conditional clause. So where previously used flag equals zero because we don't want to include the words where the flag is one. You should see slightly lower count numbers in the visuals now after we edit the second measure too. Here is just a table I formatted with the list of words from our letters table. I also created a third table and measure. Now for the magic, I'm going to click on the box with the C and the rest of the report is going to filter the data based on words that start with C. Hold down control and at the same time, click on our O in our second visual, AKA the most popular second letter in a word um, and do that for A in the third like the third visual and in the word list on the side people we have our perfect first wordle words i personally like to use coals it's been doing me great so far i've been getting like threes and fours at least i think that's great okay let's publish this just kidding I'll see you guys next time <laughs>